Good evening. Good evening. Ladies and gentlemen, what about a round of applause for Ismo, our host? Yeah. Thank you very much. My name is Harith Iskander. I am from Malaysia. Anybody been to Malaysia? Say hey. You have? Who said it? You seriously? You've been to Malaysia? You're not screwing around. You, you've been to Malaysia. No, you haven't. Yeah, no, I haven't been to Malaysia. I, Malaysia, truly Asia. Malaysia is, a, a, very quickly, to those of you not been to Malaysia, most of you, we have a tropical weather. We are 36 degrees s Celsius in the, sa in the shade. 36. And now I flow all the way to Finland. <laughs> I arrive in Helsinki. Negative 7, first of all, in Helsinki. Yeah. <laughs> it's cold. I, I, I'm not fat. I'm wearing every single piece of clothing I own. <laughs> Seriously, that's... And from Helsinki, we are now here in Levy, Lapland, 1,000 kilometers north. Say, hey, Levy! Hey! hey. How, how, many, how many Finnish people in the house? Say, hey. hey! All of you are Finnish. Why are you coming here? It's, it's even more colder than it is in Helsinki. I got here and it's snow everywhere. Snow, snow, snow. I've never seen snow. This is my first time seeing snow. Seriously. Yeah, I'm, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not joking. My mind is blown. In Malaysia, Christmas time, snow appears in shopping centers in the form of styrofoam balls. <laughs> Have you ever tried to ski on styrofoam? You can't get anywhere. You can't. And, and I'm excited. You've got a Santa Claus town here. I saw Santa Claus at the airport, actually. He was near a loading bay. He looked freaky. <laughs> he looked jolly, but he was freaky. I saw Frosty the Snowman. He looked cool. <laughs> I didn't see Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer until I had breakfast this morning. He wasn't at breakfast. He was actually the breakfast. We had, a, we, had a rain we had a reindeer sandwich. I know, you guys. It's, it's cool. It's cool. I'm, but I'm so glad. I had, to Google, I had to Google, though, where Lapland was because I know most of you, when you heard Malaysia, I saw you pull out your phones. You were like, Malaysia? Where the hell is that? I had to Google, <laughs> but I Googled, I Googled Finland, and I, re I found out Finland has the best education system in the world. In the world, according to Google. <laughs> Amazing. And then I get here, and I meet Ismo. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I, no, it's okay. I found out he studied overseas. He went to Sweden in school, so it's all right. <laughs> But I am excited to be here. I am from Malaysia. I flew over on Singapore Airlines. They, 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 gave me, they gave me a ticket and I flew over on business class. Has anybody flown Singapore Airlines? No, I tell you, I, I flew business class. First time ever flying business class. I did not know business class has an entrance into the plane separate from everybody else. Has anybody flown business class? Say hey. You, one or two people, that's right. You, <laughs> it's a separate door. Separate door. Door A, <coughs> door A, door B. B. Economy people walking, economy walking into door B. I was walking in door A. I was like, where are you going? Oh, we're economy. Huh. <laughs> I'm business. Because when you walk into business class, you've got to walk business style. You've got you to walk business style. You walk into business class, and the stewardess, Singapore Airlines stewardess, hair pulled tightly in a bun, smiling. It's like, good evening, Mr. Harith. Welcome to your seat. And I was like, oh, yeah, business class. <laughs> I just walked straight. This, I, I've flown economy my whole life. I'm sitting there like that, business class. <sighs> well, I got leg room. I'm, 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 I just sat there like, look at this. I'm not kicking anyone. Look at this. In business class in Singapore, they got, they got the seat. The, the, the TV is like three meters away from you. And they play, they play the safety demonstration. Everybody's flown, right? They always play the safety demonstration before you take off, right? Do all of you watch the safety demonstration? No. <laughs> Nobody watches the safety demonstration. Safety demonstration going on. Nobody watching it. Everybody's doing, reading newspaper. No. That's why when a plane crashes, everybody dies. <laughs> Nobody watches safety demonstration. <laughs> You have to watch the safety demonstration. In the event of an emergency, an oxygen-like mask will drop down in front of you. Place over your nose and mouth, pull headband around your hair, and breathe normally. <laughs> breathe normally. The plane is going to crash. I'm going to die. 
You want me to breathe normally? I'm going to breathe any way I like. <laughs> and what is it with the life jacket? In the event of a water landing, a life jacket is under the seat in front of you. Place over here, then you clip over here, then you clip over here, then before you get off the plane, you tug it. After you get off the plane, you tug it. Then we have a whistle. And then I've, I've watched it a million times. I still can't. I tell you, if a plane crashes, I will be 50 feet under the water, still trying to clip the bloody thing. Like, what the hell? Look, don't give me a life jacket. Give me a, in the rubber tire. You know the black rubber tire, that one? I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Oh, and the plane takes off, and oh, the pilot likes to talk to you. The pilot loves to talk to you, don't they? Ding, ding. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're flying approximately 36,000 feet. Uh, uh, if you fly to the left side of the side, we got to fly to the What the hell is the flight talking about? <laughs> Cannot understand him. He's reading the menu. Uh, we're going to have artichokes and chicken. <laughs> I said, but this business class, it was so good, it was open. Now, I flew, we took off at 11.30 at night, right? About 12.30, I'm a little bit tired. I try to put the seat, because I hear in business class, you have, to, you have the seat open, you have the big seat. So I, I put the seat back, mm, it only went 45 degrees. And I was like, oh, this is not the way to sleep. How did, this is not the full bed. I put my foot up, I was like, then I realized, you know what, this is probably how business class people sleep. They probably sleep, they probably sleep like that. They're, they're like, I was, sitting, I was sitting like that in business class. I was sitting, oh, this, this must be the business class sleeping position because when you're in business class, you must be ready to do business. So any moment you want to buy a company, you're like, oh, I'm buying a company. You cannot be fully inclined because if by the time you get up, you won't buy the company. It's too late. So I, I slept for 45 minutes. I was like, this must be business class sleep. I'm in a yoga position. I'm in business class zen. Mm. 45 minutes, I got up. I, I called the, the, the stewardess. She came over and she was like, can I have a glass of water? She's like, uh, Mr. Harris, do you mind if I make the bed for you? I'm like, I'm, the bed is fine. <laughs> What's wrong with the bed? She's like, excuse me, sir. She, she made me sit up. She put the seat back. She pressed one button. <laughs> wow. There's a full bed sitting there. And I was like, that's not business. I cannot do business lying down. I need to sleep like this. Twelve and a half hours to Helsinki. I was sleeping like this. I tell you. But <coughs> stewardess was lovely. I dated a stewardess once. I did. Uh, she was a Singapore Airlines stewardess. Smiling all the time. Seriously. She smiled at me all the time. And I then I realized why. Have you seen Singapore Airlines stewardesses? The hair is pulled so tightly in a bun. This smile. Smile all the time. I dated her for six months. First time she let go ahead. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. No, I am married now, ladies and gentlemen. I have been married for six years, but I have to tell you the story of this relationship I had. How many people here in the relationship say, hey? Uh, uh, relationship, relationship. Look at the relationships. They're all holding hands across the table. I can tell. The ones holding the hands, they're in the six, six month and below relationship. Everywhere, when you're in a relationship for six months, you hold hands everywhere you go. You, you hold hands. You hold hands. You cross the road. You hold hands. You're having a drink, you hold hands. You can't even go to the toilet. You can't, you're sitting there, you're holding hands. Yeah, and then you get up to go to the toilet. And you, you say, oh, where are you going? I'm going to the toilet. <laughs> oh. 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 No, I, I, I need to go to the toilet. I need to go to the Oh, can I come with you? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'll call you when I get there. I'll call you when I get there. And you do. You go to the toilet and you do. Tuk, 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 tuk. <laughs> Hello. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I miss you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he misses you too. <laughs> so uh, let me tell you the story. I was in a relationship. Now, uh, I was in a relationship uh, with, with this girlfriend. I'm, I'm now married now. I, I finally got married six years ago. Ladies and gentlemen, I got married at a slightly older age, 44 years old. Thank you for clapping. I don't know why you're clapping. Seriously, <laughs> but thank you for clapping. I, I got married a little bit late because I suddenly realized the secret to uh, relationships. I finally realized what it takes to be in a relationship. I finally realized the secret is, may I share the secret with you? May I share the secret with you? Yes. Men, all you have to realize is women are more intelligent than men. That's all. It's so simple. It's very simple. It's very simple. Yep, women clapping, women clapping. Men are like... Uh-huh. Uh-huh, yeah, what? Mm -hmm. no. no, women are more intelligent. I have proof. I have proof, ladies and gentlemen. Google it. You will find this. 
Women are more intelligent than men because women, on an average day, 24 hours, women use and speak 20,000 words in a day, 24 hours. Men, 7,000 words. This is a fact. This is, which is why, at the end of the day, every time I catch up with my wife, she's still talking. I, 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 after work, I come home, my wife is there, you know, and I'm like, hey, hey, baby, hey, darling, how was your day? When I ask my wife, how was your day, she will tell you. She will tell you, oh, my God, you will not believe the kind of day I had today. I got to work at 8.30 in the morning. The moment I got to work, and I decided to do some work because my clients are calling about 9 o'clock. So I sat down on my watch. My, my phone was ringing. I told my clients are calling me at 8.30. What, never mind. So I decided to answer my client. I said, hello, okay, you should call me back at 9 o'clock. So I put on the phone. I, I started my computer. My clients kept calling me. I said, they're really crazy calling me. Anyway, so I answered my client for 9 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I was talking to my clients. They're so busy. I started looking at my watch, and it's 12.30. Oh, my God, 12.30. It's lunchtime. I'm really hungry. I decided to go for lunch. So I went for lunch. I started. I was walking across the road, and suddenly I said, oh, McDonald's, should I have some McDonald's? No, I don't have some McDonald's. So I decided to go for lunch. And, I just, and she, tells, she tells me everything from 8.30 in the morning till 6 in the evening. She tells me every single thing she did. Then she asked me, and how was your day? Uh, uh, okay. Okay. It's okay. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. And she asked, how come you never talk? How come you never talk? How come you I said, I've only got 7,000 words. You want to talk to me? Talk to me before lunch. Because all my words are gone. Oh my. Now, not only, do all, do, not only do women know so many words, they speak so many words. Because have you ever, have you gone online? Look at all the websites on a woman's history in the computer. Look at all the websites, all the Pinterest and all the blogs. Women are constantly reading. They love to read, reading, reading, reading. Fashion tips, advice tips, reading, reading. Look at a man's history on a computer. Women in bikinis. You know, women do, oh, do, oh, look at that, women in bikinis, oh, well, me, Mia Khalifa, oh, blah, 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 blah. click, click, click. And, well, but men are smart. We have women in bikinis, naked women, naked women with boobies, then you have one tab, shark attacks. How to survive a shark attack. You keep that tab handy because you're looking at women in bikinis. When your wife comes beside, you click to shark attacks. And she goes, darling, what are you doing? I'm looking at shark attacks. How to survive a shark attack. It's very important. And she walks by and Look at it. Yeah, and then you click back. Because you, you, only want, you only want to see pictures. Men, we only want to see pictures. But women, I tell you, they have all this information. Not only do women have this information, they use this information. Oh, my God. They, they retain that information. I don't know. Women have this, they have this ability to keep information in their head. All, everything. Everything is in there. If you are a little, like a little microcosm and you went into a woman's brain, <laughs> you go into a woman's brain, <laughs> you be stuck because too much information, who I met, what they said, how I spoke to them, what they replied, all the information, you could not move. You go into a man's brain. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Is anybody there? <laughs> oh, look, a shark. <laughs> Seriously, you would not... You couldn't have any space, I tell you. No, I say, very quickly, very quick story, very quick story. I tell you once, I was walking with my ex-girlfriend. We were walking in a mall. I was walking with my ex-girlfriend. We were holding hands. And then this was my girlfriend at the time, not my wife. I was walking, and then we, we saw my, another ex-girlfriend coming towards me. I did what any man would do. I tried to avoid. <laughs> but I, my, my, my other ex-girlfriend saw me. And she was like, hi, Harith. I was like, hey, hi, how are you? <laughs> and I started talking to this ex-girlfriend. While well, this girlfriend was here, hey, this is my girlfriend. And we start, I was talking to her, hey, how are you? It's really interesting. How are you? And I, and I said, okay, bye. We'll see you later. And look around. And my girlfriend had walked on. She had walked on. And I was chasing my girlfriend down. Chased her down. I said, hey, baby, 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 what's wrong? What's wrong? And she was like, no, nothing. When you ask a woman what's wrong and she says nothing, everything, everything is wrong. Everything. But I'm young. I'm stupid. I'm like, oh, nothing is wrong. Nothing is wrong. Went to watch a movie. We were sitting in a movie. I was trying to hold a hand. She kept pulling her away. You know, then after, the, after the movie, we went for a meal. I ordered a hot coffee. Just about to take a, sh a drink of my hot coffee. Just about to take a drink of my hot coffee. Leaned into my hot coffee. And suddenly my girlfriend goes, Who was that girl, girl you were talking to? And I don't know what. And I knew. I knew something was up. Because another girl came up with a number one board. And she was like, Round one. And then I knew, question time, it was going down. Seriously.
It was going down. It was going down. Question time. Because then all the questions started coming. Who was that girl you were talking to? Oh, she was just a friend of mine. Oh, how long have you known her? Oh, three years. Do you still talk to her? Yes, once in a while. It's a number in your phone. All the questions came at me. I was like one of those, those in the Chinese movies with the ninja stars coming. Oh, ding, ding, ding. Pachong, pachong, pachong. Deflecting all the ninja stars. But I realized 52 questions, then they stop. It's like a pack of cards. 52 questions. And then she stopped and she was like, okay. She was satisfied. I was like, whew, survive round one. <laughs> Went to my corner. They were like, all right, you did well, you did well, you did well. All right, now we're on one. Was driving her back, driving her back. Drove, drove her, came to her house, dropped her off at the house. Urgh! She pulled out her seatbelt. She got out of the car, and then she was like, who is that girl you were talking to? Ding, 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 round two. And then she started asking me the questions again. Now, here's the thing. It was the same questions. It was the same questions. And I'm th men, we are thinking, what, did they forget that they asked us the same questions? No, women remember. They want to see whether we have the same answer. Ah, who was that girl you were talking to? Yeah, the women clapping. Yeah. Who was that girl you were talking to? Then she asked, how long have you known her? And I said, four years. And she goes, time out. Is it three or four. Oh, and she had me in a headlock. I was like, in a headlock. Three and a half, three and a half. And I got past the round, round two, 52 questions, completed the rounds, left it there, dropped it off. She walked into a house. I am driving home. <sighs> Suddenly my phone goes up. I look at my phone. Ah, oh, it's, it's her again. I pull to the side of the road. <sighs> Stop the guard. Put down this window. <sighs> Put on my seatbelt. Light a cigarette. Put my seatbelt. <laughs> Round three. Ding, ding, ding. No, I don't need the music. I don't need the music anymore. It's round three. It's round three. And I'm like, hello. And the questions come. But round three, unlimited questions. Questions not even related to that girl. Other questions from three years ago, five years ago. All the questions came. I'm there from 11.15 at night to 2.40 in the morning. Oh, on the phone, on the phone, answering the phone, what are we doing? She's asking me questions. People driving by see me. They know what's going on. Men driving by like, mm, steady, steady, brother. Yo, relax, brother. You can do it, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, brother. Thank you. Women driving by, they know what's going on. They're like, mm, beep, beep, it's your fault. How do you know it's my fault? Then she goes, who are you talking to? I don't know. I don't know. She was just talking about I, I, I was at 3.15 in the morning. I was at the side of the road. A police car came by. Woo, woo, woo. Pulled to the front. Woo. And I was like, baby, baby, baby. I'll call you back. I'll call you back. The police are here. The police are here. I'll call you back. And she said, oh, so the police are more important than me. A question you cannot answer. I said, no, the police are not more important than me. The policeman got out of his car. Took one look at me, opened his boot, pulled out some orange cones, put it around my car. I said, what's going on? I said, round three, brother. He was like, round three, you carry on. Move on. Nothing here. Nothing to see here. You carry on. Carry on, brother. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Arith Skanda. Comedy brings the world together. Thank you.